What's really good people, it's your boy Rashad back again with another video. It's actually been a while since I've done a TV show review. We're gonna get into some Jessica Jones season three. The final season, the last Defender standing. <sighs> Major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the full season, be diving straight into spoilers, I'm gonna be giving my thoughts. So if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go and binge that immediately. But for those of you that are still here, Let's get straight into it. In this season of Jessica Jones, Jessica and Trish, who is now trying to be a superhero also, face off against a genuine evil serial killer. He's not super powered, he's just very smart, very calculating, and he knows who they are. So it goes without saying that Kristen Ritter, the actress that plays Jessica Jones, absolutely killed it. She kills it every season, but this being the last time that she's going to be playing this character it really showed in her performances she gave it her all she didn't throw anything in and i could not ask for a better jessica jones she even brought different layers of vulnerability and pain and the performances were just incredible it was a literal marvel to see her on screen a few fan favorites do come back and make a return so you've got malcolm hogarth and Trish, I'll go a little bit deeper into Trish's character and, and her story arc this season a little bit later. I hated her last season. I completely hated her. She was a terrible person, a terrible character, and I didn't understand why she was doing the things that she did. This season did a lot to sway me towards Trish's side. I finally understood her motivations, why she does what she does, why she is, who she is, and everything in between her thought processes. I completely get Trish now. Let's just say she had an interesting art this time around. Eka Darville, Eka Darville, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. The actor that plays Malcolm, he had an interesting art too. He's working for Hogarth now as a private investigator. He's very good at his job. And you can see that he's starting to go down a dark path where he doesn't really know what's right and what's wrong. And he doesn't really know if he's the good guy anymore. I feel like that's what the theme of this season is. It's the duality of people in general and what makes a good person and what makes a bad person. I do like Malcolm's character, but for me personally, his whole story arc was inconsequential to the plot as a whole. So if you removed it from this season, it probably wouldn't have made that much difference to the narrative. But they did need some more character development for the supporting characters just to flesh out the season a little bit. The same with Jerry Hogarth, Carrie Ann Moss, who plays Hogarth, is amazing in this role. Hogarth herself is a piece of shit this season. I find no redeemable qualities in this character. She's been going down the wrong path for almost three seasons now. Every time we think she's going to redeem herself, she does something worse. And I feel like she's done the worst of the worst in this season. She's very selfish, very controlling, and she doesn't actually get any sort of comeuppance. Which really annoyed me. The only consequences to her actions is that she didn't really get to stay with the love of her life. But you didn't see her die because of her illness or anything like that. And I feel like that would have added an extra dynamic to her character or at least offered some form of redemption for her. But we didn't really get that. This season also introduces two new characters who I absolutely loved. Firstly, we have Benjamin Walker as Eric Gelden. Apparently he plays the character Mindwipe from the comics. They put a whole new spin on this character, which I enjoyed. He has the power to fill people's darkness, basically. Evil people give him headaches. They physically hurt him, they make him sick. If he's around really bad people for extended periods of time, his eyes start bleeding, his nose starts bleeding. And I found that really interesting. He's very selfish, he's extremely, extremely similar to Jessica. He drinks a lot, he doesn't really care about anybody but himself. This harkens back to what Jessica was like in the first season, but he has a really good reason for not using his power for good. And I, enjoyed the fuck out of his backstory and when he explained what happened with him. It really shows you that being a hero is not all it's cracked up to be. And that's also one of the themes of this season. Just trying to prove what a hero is and isn't. Jeremy Bob plays Greg Salinger, Gregory Salinger, the fool killer in the comics, the serial killer and the main big bad villain of this season. And he was amazing. He was a great foil for Jessica. Whenever he was on screen, he was intimidating. He was creepy. He just wanted to purge people that in his mind were cheating. 
people with natural gifts, natural talents that wasted it or used it to take advantage of opportunities that regular hardworking people couldn't have. Those were his own insecurities, but he was taking it out on the world. He especially hated superpowered people because he saw them as actual cheaters. Like they were given these gifts, they didn't have to earn them or anything like that. And they were just using them and abusing them. And he hated that. But he was a great villain. Um, he was in most of the season and every time he was on screen, he was captivating to watch. But the way that the serial killer is introduced and the way that they play out the episodes and the events that happen in the first couple of episodes to introduce the main villain was perfect. I feel like it was like a murder mystery. It was a whole puzzle to solve to find out who this killer is and what he was going to do next. That carried over for the whole season because they were constantly two steps behind. Trying to capture someone and put someone in prison is much harder than going out and killing him. Jessica wanted to do this the correct way because now the world's eyes are on her and she feels like she owes it to her mother to become the hero that her mother wanted her to be. Trish at first agrees with her but then due to certain circumstances i.e. the death of Dorothy which was an extremely shocking and great scene which added so much character development to Trish and put so much strain on Trish and Jessica's relationship they have different ideologies and different methods of taking care of the same problem. As I said before, this season did a lot to endear me to Trish and in the first couple of episodes, I really did like her. I really understood her motivations. I would say though that the way that they portrayed Trish's powers was okay at first and I enjoyed the fighting and the choreography, but I really wish they did a little bit more just because it didn't really look like a super powered being doing these things. It just looked like someone who's just very skilled um, which was annoying. It looked like someone that had been doing free running or parkour or even like fighting for a long period of time could have done exactly what she did. But at the end of the season, I do feel like Jessica has finally made peace with what she wants to do and who she wants to be. I feel like she had a great arc this season. It was a great way to close the book on her character. The fact that Trish started this season as a hero or an aspiring hero and ended this season as a villain being shipped off to the raft never to be seen again was more tragic than shocking it made perfect sense the way they executed it as i said was flawless and i wasn't shocked that that's where she ended up it seemed inevitable after a point and it was just sad that that's what happened because even when she would realize that she was the bad guy something broke in her someone who's trying so hard to be a hero it must have the realization that she is actually the thing that she hates most it was heartbreaking it was heartbreaking props to all the performances by all the cast because this season was amazing i will rate jessica jones season three a 10 out of 10 it was just as good as the first season. There were some storylines and some story arcs that could have been removed to make it a shorter, more concise season. But I feel like those are just personal gripes for me. This season was amazing. And for the last Marvel Defender show, it was a great way to close the chapter on this saga. So those are my thoughts on Jessica Jones season three. Let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comments below. Smash the like button. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Turn those post notifications on. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And as usual, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Taylor about the fucking flex.